All right, so let's go ahead. Let's try this one again. Okay. All right, first thing we need to do is just get it out of the books. Let's determine do we have a vertical or do we have a horizontal? All right? So let's just determine what is our axis of symmetry going to be? Is it going to be a vertical axis of symmetry, which we're used to, right? When if it opens up or down, or is it going to be one of these horizontal ones like that last problem? And what we notice is since this has an x squared, Maria, since this has an x squared, this is going to be a vertical, um, vertical axis of symmetry. So that means my parabola is either going to open up or it's going to open down, right? And that's good. Those are parabolas that we're used to. We remember those. The next thing is we need to write this in standard form. Now, before we write it in standard form, we need to make sure we understand what our standard form looks like. So our standard form states that x minus h squared equals 4p times y minus k. Now in my previous problem, remember I had to move the I had to move like the x and the y's to the other sides to make it look like this. And remember then I took those numbers and I made them less minus zero. Well here we don't have to do all that stuff. We're, we're actually pretty lucky because we already know what our h is and we know what our k is, right? I mean they're provided in our formula. The only thing now we don't know is what our p is. We have the 4, but we don't have what our p is. So to do that, you notice all we're going to do is set 4p equal to what we have in front. So I can write 4p is equal to 4. Hey, Mr. Nicholas, what yes. Uh, this is 18, I believe. 20. Uh, 20, it's my minus 1. Not Sorry? It's my, it's my minus 1. Not minus 2. Oh, okay. So we have 4p equals 4. So therefore, to find the value of 4p, I divide by 4 and I get p equals 1. All right. Now, just so you guys can see it, I'm just going to rewrite it in its complete form so you guys can see what exactly all of my values are. Okay. Now, do I pretty much have exact similarities? Now I can figure out everything. Yes? So, um, h should be a negative one-half, right? Not a positive? Correct. Just like when you guys are remembering your parabolas, remember, always going to be taking the opposite of each of those terms. So my vertex is going to be the exact opposite. It's going to be x, I'm sorry, it's going to be a negative one-half, comma, one. Right? You're always going to be taking the opposite. And if you guys just want to look at that, why is it the opposite? Well, it says x minus your value of h. Right? So if I want to look at this, and you, you, know, you could also solve for 0. Well, if it's a plus, then that really means x minus a negative h. That gives you that plus, right? When I do x minus x minus a negative one half, if I rewrite x plus one half, if I rewrite that as a subtraction problem, I would have to rewrite it as x minus a negative one half. Therefore, that's why I know that my h is going to be negative. All right? The other way you can do it is just set whatever's in there equal to zero, and that's going to be your value um, as it's so forth for you. So I have my vertex is a negative one half comma one. Then I need to determine what my p is. Remember, my p is the distance from my vertex to my directrix. So that's why I did this. I set the 4p equal to the 4, so I can enter my p value is equal to 1. So therefore, the distance from my vertex is a positive 1. So the important thing, guys, remember, when you're doing this, if you can start off with understanding that this is a vertical parabola, I'm sorry, and ver vertical axis symmetry, we know that, one, my vertex is at negative one half, up one, right there. So my parabola either opens up or it opens down. Okay? Now, we could take a look at this and say, oh, well, you know, look at the formula and you can see that, you know, your, uh, your number front of your x squared, you know, whatever, going back to the quadratic form, that will tell you what it opens up or down. 
But we can also look at how to figure out what the focus is. Remember, the focus is you're going to be adding, um, adding your P. So if I look at this to your Y, so my focus is going to be X, oh. sorry, H comma K plus P. Remember, H and K is your vertex, right? Which I didn't write in there. So my vertex is H comma K. For my focus, all I need to do is just add my P to my Y coordinate of the folk of my vertex. So I have H comma K plus P. Well, if I add one to that, my focus I'm gonna get is a negative one half comma two. Because one plus one could be two. Right? So if I go and look at this. Where did you get negative one? Negative one for what? Remember, it's going to be the opposite for your H and your K. We're taking, since it's in your formula, it's X minus H and Y minus K. Our vertex is, um, this is negative one half, that's probably one, it's negative one half positive one. Remember, it's always taking the opposite of both of those terms. All right, was that the question I'm doing? <coughs> Uh, here's, here's my point. It, we do, it doesn't matter what your P is, right? You figured out what P is. P can be positive or negative. All you do to find your focus, to find your focus, you add your P to the Y coordinate of your vertex, which is your K. So when I add one plus one, one plus one, I get two. So let's just go and plot that. So negative one half, two. So that's my focus. So now that tells me my graph has to open up, right? Because the focus is contained inside your parabola. So if you get a value that's below your vertex, so it opens down. Exactly. Does that make sense? So it's going up. It's going to be going up. So I don't need to worry about this. Now let's find that this. Okay. Just remember, guys, when you're focused, when you're dealing with a vertical, you're adding your p value to your y coordinate of your vertex. So now my directrix. is going to be the exact opposite, right? Y equals K minus P. Well, we look at my K, which is one, minus one is going to be zero. So my directrix is actually on the x-axis. So that's my directrix. Therefore now, I have successfully found my vertex, which was H and K, which was given in the problem. I have found my focus, which was just taking my P and adding it to my K value, or my Y coordinate of, of the my vertex. And my directrix was now subtracting that value from P of the Y value. Okay? Cool? Yes. All right. Is that a little bit better explanation than the first one? Yeah, where the determine where the focus was. Since the focus was above my vertex, then I knew my parabola had to open up.